Hey guys, CT Stealth here, and sorry about the delay in the spine rigging process. Uh, I've been sick recently, and I actually made this these videos, but I was stupid, and the way I record my videos, uh, I was saving over the same file over and over again. So I had to redo all of this back to this point. So that being said, we'll just jump right into it. Um, if you recall in the last video, what we did is we created this spine curve, which you can see... Um, let me select them all, and, okay, select right there, all right, and just hide them all. So here's the spine curve. Now what the spine curve is going to actually do is it's going to influence the, what, uh, what these bones that we just created here, they're going to be like the high resolution bones. They're the bones that deform the mesh. So the spine curve will influence the bones themselves. So if I click on the spine curve and I go to like F8 mode, you won't be able to see this, but there's these control vertices. And I'm, I can move them, and as you can see, the bones will deform as according to how the spine is manipulated based on the curve. So um, that being said, what we need to do is we need to first rename our um, hierarchy. Currently, they're all joint one through whatever and I want to place it with uh, so you know I went to modify search replace names search for the word joint and we, what we want to put in is high res um, yeah high res that's fine and we'll just click apply and you'll notice over here that uh, all of them have been named and that's exactly what we want now what we what we don't want to do well First, let me just tell you what, what we're overall going with this. Since these are going to be bound to the mesh itself, the the skin is going to be deforming based on the exact locations of each one of these uh, bones. But we don't want to move each bone individually. Because if we move each bone individually, yes, it would give greater realism, but that's a lot of controls for the animator to actually manipulate. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually create what I, what I like to call a just like a rig. It's a it's basically a way to manipulate the spine without having the animator worry at each one of these little um, high-res bones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this and I can actually do this in the perspective but I'm going to create a joint and we're going to create three joints because we want the animator in this case to have three controls. So um, first I'm going to you know I've selected my joint in the skeleton um, menu set and I'm going to hold down the C key which will snap to the curve and I'm going to click the curve and as you can see I'm dragging it and I'm going to snap it down to the bottom of the curve as far as it can go. I'm going to let it go and then I'm going to go and I'm still going to hold down the C key while I'm clicking and I'm going to create another one and I'm going to place it right about here right over where the loop happens. So it's about to start to go curves around that corner and then you know goes off in that direction. Now I'm going to continue to hold down the C key. I'm going to create another joint roughly about I don't know maybe here okay and then I'm going to create the last joint up at the top. So based on this my spine curve is actually kind of wide and I notice because when I'm looking in the side view these joints are not meeting in the middle and when I'm creating these curves what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do let's see NURBS circle option box and I want this to be uh, I think it's X no that's not what I want so I think it's Y up yes okay so I'm just showing you this but when I place these nerve circles, which will be the controllers for the spine rig, which will then influence the high-res bones, um, you can see that in each one, each one of these points here is where another circle will be. So I'm just going to duplicate them and just snap them, and you can kind of see where they're going to be. Now, <clears throat> our ultimate goal is to try to get all of these to be kind of straightish, but uh, the way I made my spine rig, it's actually kind of a uh, big bowish. So I'm, I probably made it a little bit too bow. 
Uh, so if you had actually done this too, you can probably like scoot this the spine curve in. Um, I'm not going to really worry about it right now because it's just for demonstration. I'm not actually going to rig it or uh, bind the skin to anything. So there's no need for me to just go back and redo it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm just going to hide these for now. And we're going to, you know, rotate these bones to make sure they you know we have the exact orientations we need to know what is going on with the bones and how is it going to influence so I'm gonna look at the local rotation axes of course as usual gotta love the uh, local rotation axes and you can see here that uh, one joint is pointing another direction so I'm going to flip this rotate I think it's 0, 180, 0, semicolon, and copy that, yes, okay. So it reversed it, and now all the X's are pointing in one direction. But let's make sure that that's the rotation we want. So I'm going to select my bone, and I'm going to move this along the X axis, and it looks like forward is negative, and I'm going to rotate to my right, and that that is the positive. I'm going to rotate the Z towards me, and that is positive. Now this is very important because when you add the controllers, you can actually get two completely different results. So let's look at the NURB circle. All right, I'm going to sh show that, and now I'm going to move the X forward, and I'm going to look at the rotate. Now look how the rotate X is actually a positive number. But if I move this bone here and I move it forward, this rotate X is negative. So, you know, it's not that it's a bad thing. We, it's just a lot more beneficial if we can get both of those two rotating the same direction. So I'm actually going to grab my local, local rotation axes and I'm going to turn these to where... Um, I'll get it to where I want it to be. So let's see, rotate 0, 180, 0, semicolon. And I guess I forgot to grab that one. Okay, that one does not want to move, so I will grab that and say make that zero, rotate zero, zero, zero. All right, now it's back in the default position. Uh, let's see if this is the correct position to rotate. So I'm going to move it forward. Rotate X is now positive, and this one is positive. <coughs> so let's check our other axes. All right, so I'm going to rotate this right, or I guess that's left. No, no, that's, that's the character's right. Okay, so that turning it right is negative. Now I'm going to grab the bone, and I'm going to turn it right, and that is also negative. Now I'm going to turn this one downward like this, and that's negative. So let's grab this one, and I'm going to turn it, and it is also negative. So now our circles are now matching up with the ro rotations, and it should be for all of them because we manipulated the local rotation axes to work for us and not against us. Alright, so now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to select the bone and then we're going to select the spine curve. Oh, we should actually name this so I don't get confused. I'm going to go to search and replace names. Search for joint, replace it with spine, and then rig. Now, I always put rigs in things that I don't want to bind to the bones. That tells me, as a rigger, that, okay, we've made these bones, do not bind it to the skin at any cost. It's just there to do manipulation or some type of setup I've done, which I, I last did that in the fleet. So, um, okay, I'm going to have to stop here. Um, so I will see you in the next video, and hopefully I don't override this one this time. <laughs> Alright, see you in a few.